When I'm not legit just meeting someone here for the first time, realizing I'm still wearing my elephant slippers, and then very unconvincingly saying, it's a Halloween thing, I like to answer questions that I get on YouTube. So let's get to it. What is your process for finding gigs to play at? Like, what do you say to venues to get them interested? All uh, right, so the best advice that I can give is to find yourself a kindred that will just get male club owners to really give you whatever you want. But assuming that's not the case, a couple tips that I've been able to kind of like figure getting into the mind of like a, a venue owner or a club owner or a restaurant owner is to really just realize that it's kind of a two-way street. And, and like, if they're going to be paying you to do something, they kind of expect you to bring something to the table aside from just playing. Whether that's be whether that is just like bringing people with you, like your own people to come see them, to kind of like just put people in seats that'll eventually buy something. Or something that I found is really helpful is club owners, venue owners love social media. I think that they know the keyword social media is something they should be doing but do not understand. So if you can come with them and be like, listen, I'm gonna put this on my Instagram and I'm gonna take a video of this and I'm gonna kind of put your, your venue in a good light and share it around, that is usually something that they always are very interested in. You don't even need to have a big following. Uh, just be able to kind of get something for them, uh, like physically, like digitally, that they can kind of see. And all that stuff kind of provides value and just spreading the word out. Again, even if you have like 15 Instagram followers, just the fact that you're getting some kind of video for the thing, they're going to be helpful. Uh, they're going to be really grateful for that kind of thing. Another thing that I've actually found is helpful for both sides is to actually bring up the idea of maybe playing kind of like a test show unpaid. I know it kind of sucks kind of having to do stuff that's unpaid. And you definitely don't want to be doing like getting into the habit of doing full like three hour, four hour sets without, you know, getting something from the owner. But for me, I've actually found that like, kind of like getting your sound set up in the first the first time you go to a venue is kind of like a process. So I actually like just going and maybe just playing like a 30 minute set or just like an hour set, just to kind of see what the vibe is, if it's something that I'm unfamiliar with. And that way, you know, you can maybe bring some of your own people to show that you can draw some people, even if you have to like, just like hire plants. Like if you have no friends, <laughs> just get people to come and just watch you kind of do a practice gig. I've found that's actually really helpful. And if it is a venue that has any kind of live music, usually they're pretty open to that. Uh, even if it's kind of like non-peak hours, like I said, just to kind of get uh, down how you're gonna set up, where you're gonna set up, what you need to bring, what kind of gear you need to bring. I think that's like a valuable thing that you're gonna wanna know anyways, even if it is for just kind of like a trial run set. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like a full, like three hour set. Most of the, the venues around here, it's like a three, two and a half to four hour set. So it is kind of like a, you know, it's, a, it's definitely work, you know? So if you can just get by doing like an hour set just to kind of show what you have to give, I think that's really, really cool, good thing to do. And definitely try to get some kind of video recording, even if it's just off like an iPhone or like a phone cam or something like that. And then put it on whatever kind of social media. Again, just keep saying the word social media and venue owners will be like, yes, I'm in. You kind of touched on something that I've noticed. For some reason, it's assumed that if you enjoy playing music, you also want or need to perform. I have a good friend who has a band but always complains about clubs ripping him off and the business end of it. That got me thinking that really the joy of playing music has nothing to do with the performing. Just my two cents. I 100% absolutely agree with this. I think there is, I've definitely experienced this from some of like the local musicians around town. They'll look at musicians who aren't like playing out and they almost kind of look down on them. And I think that is just like so wrong and so stupid. I think music should just be for like your own enjoyment first. And if you have the itch to go perform, more power to you, get out there and do it. Now, I do want to say that I think it is a great experience for everybody to at least try their hand at performing because I think a lot of the time, people don't want to perform because maybe they're kind of intimidated to do so. Seriously, like performing out is not a big deal at all. Like the worst case scenario is so just like nobody cares, you know, like really nobody cares. So if it's something that you have any inclination to do, I would advise everybody to try it at least once. If it's not for you, that is totally cool. Uh, but I found it to be like a really kind of fun, rewarding experience, but definitely not necessary. If you have no aspirations to ever perform, if you're just doing it for your own enjoyment, uh, more power to you. That doesn't make you any less a musician and uh, just keep rocking it out. Tells people to use Pinky, doesn't use Pinky himself. Tells people how to not look like a noob, is a noob himself. You should take some technique and hand position lessons, dog. It helped a lot. There's no word in the English language like dog 
with a W, with the exception of maybe bro, where the dynamic between it being an insult and it being like a loving compliment is so great. But uh, generally, I kind of I kind of enjoy being called dog, and I'm definitely a bro. So I think that's a salty comment, but I just really don't know. Great prizes. Can I enter the contest even from outside the U.S.? So I've got this contest going on where you can write amazing fan fiction or fan art or some kind of cover song, and you can win all sorts of prizes like microphones, fuzz pedals, wireless guitar units, lanyards. So make sure you check that out if you want to enter it. And I am going to ship these outside of the U.S. Now, I'm very ignorant when it comes to international shipping, so I could be in for like a shell shock. But uh, even if for some reason it's not possible to do it, I'll make it right, whether it's just send the, you know, wire some money that is the value of the prize anyways. So if you're outside of the U.S. and you want to enter the contest, do it. What do you do when people just give you a guitar and want you to play anything? I always choke and can't think about any song. Something that you should always be prepared for. Just have some kind of stock thing to go to. Mine, what I usually do, and if it's an acoustic guitar, I usually go to my song Parador because it's kind of fun to play and I can do it on autopilot while thinking about really whatever and holding a conversation. And you know, you know, it's kind of a fun one. Ironically, I would play Bon Jovi Dead or Alive. That's always, that's always a fun one to bust out if someone just forces a guitar on you against your will. But uh, yeah, definitely have something stock so you don't get in the uncomfortable position and be like, oh, I have a guitar, what do I do? It can be anything, just have something. What's your thoughts on Greta Van Fleet? So I have talked about Greta Van Fleet before, and I, you know, I kind of like them. I don't like all their stuff, but definitely some of the stuff is cool. I definitely am a fan that they are bringing a lot of people back to the rock genre, but I wanted to mention them again because I'm gonna link you to the Pitchfork album review of their newest, of their newest uh, release, where it gets a 1.6 out of 10, and it is the most savagely written music critique I've ever personally read. Like, it's one of those things that like, even if I'm not agreeing with it, it is so savagely written that it is actually kind of entertaining. And I've talked a little bit about, on the channel here, about how like bogus Pitchfork reviews are, but uh, this one's definitely worth reading. So I'm gonna link you to that because I think it's like a, it's a good read. Please make a video about how to be vegan. All right, so I've talked about this sparingly on the channel is that I'm vegan and I've been for like a year and a half, two years, something like that. And it's not something I wanna make a huge deal about because I think a lot of people think it's like political and in some ways I, could, I can see their point. But a lot of people are asking me, so I'm just gonna kind of touch base on it. My own personal story is as follows. I played basketball my whole life, right? So I've accumulated a lot of injuries. And I think, gosh, like 10 years ago, I did this thing where I was jumping off a wall, saving a ball, and I cracked off the cartilage that sits from my big toe into my foot. And it was kind of like a huge problem. And you can't have a surgery to fix that kind of thing because cartilage has a hard time regrowing, blah, 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 whatever. So I had to tape my left foot for like the longest time. Anytime I did activity, I'd have to, otherwise it'd be bone on bone inflammation like crazy, right? So I played like that for like five years and then the same thing happened to my right foot, okay? So I had these like two feet injuries and I went to all sorts of doctors, all sorts of specialists, absolutely nobody could do anything for me. Uh, there were like, there's a surgery they could do where they could just like open my foot up and pour blood in it and like hope for the best. It was like very low success, but nothing really worked. I tried everything, I tried rehab, I tried absolutely everything, nothing could make this better. It was like, it was like a 15 minute tape job just to be able to like ball once both my feet were messed up. And then since that joint was immobilized, every time I would like put torque on it, that pressure would shoot up to my knee, I started having knee problems, everything was really going downhill for me. And then, again about a year and a half, two years ago, I started kicking it with Kindred, who is a very outspoken vegan, which, you know, a lot of people that rubs people the wrong way. You know, I totally get it. Sometimes I used to think that vegans were like the most annoying people on the planet, right? So anyways, she very quickly convinced me to, to try it, right? And I swear to God, people, four days, it took four days of being on a completely vegan diet and my feet were completely healed 100%. I can't even explain it. It really seemed like a miracle to me. I know that I'm not the only person with these stories. Again, this has nothing to do with like, you know, the political nature of what some people think that means. Just speaking from a 100% health 
you know, standpoint, eh, it was a huge game changer for me. I've been super healthy. I've had a lot of energy ever since I made the switch and it was really easy for me to do. Now, one of the reasons it's easy for me to do is because I'm so not picky at all. I like really any kind of food, so just eating a certain type of food isn't a big deal. Now, it, it would be hard for me to do it without peanut butter. Peanut butter, almond butter, whatever, is kind of like the go-to all the time. I really think that, you know, if you look into it, you'd be surprised at how easy it kind of is. Now, it can be really difficult if, you know, you're living in a situation where nobody else is vegan, but hey, if you have like some kind of injury or something that you're trying to like heal and like a lot of like traditional rehab and stuff isn't working, I would really just recommend you try it. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it's for everybody. I don't want to come off holier than thou in absolutely any ways. It works for me. Might not work for everybody. Everybody's bodies are different. But that is my own story. And I think I would have a hard time ever thinking that I would, that I would ever go back to being non-vegan. And it is weird how it kind of mentally affects you. Like I used to have pizza like at least twice a week. That was like my, like my first love is basketball. Second would be pizza. Third would probably be like music. And uh, it's just weird that like I never thought I would be able to stick to like not having pizza again. And they have vegan pizza and it's not really the same. But now like I look at stuff and I look at cheese and it's just... It just doesn't even register for me as something that I miss. So again, it was a lot easier than I thought. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time talking about this, but uh, if it's something that you're interested in, hit me up in the questions or whatever. I can always kind of get back to you about any questions you might have about that. But you know, this has been thoughtful about your health. Whatever works for you, people. For listening homework, I want to throw you to a band called I don't know how, but they found me kind of a long but cool band name and they have this uh very interesting music video they're launching it off with uh i think it's got a cool vibe check it out if you have any questions or comments hit me up in the comment section instagram twitter or the website and i'll talk to you all soon thanks a lot